Merci, Madame la Présidente. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Senators, today I rise to speak in support of my colleague Senator Stan Kucher's motion number 113 to authorize the Standing Senate Committee on Social Affairs, Science and Technology to study health misinformation, its impact on Canadians, and potential remedies. Today I'd like to focus my time on discussing some of what we currently know about vaccine hesitancy and misinformation in Canada, its causes, and potential solutions. As the world continues to work through the COVID-19 pandemic, vaccinations continue to play a critical role in keeping our communities safe. We must recognize that the pandemic had a once-in-a-generation impact. It is inevitable that there would be diverse viewpoints on such a seismic event. Unfortunately, in a digitized age, it is easier than ever before for those with views based on misinformation, whether intentionally so or not, to spread their message. At this time when the need for vaccine uptake is at an ultimate high, vaccine hesitancy has only grown and continues to increase, not only for COVID-19 vaccines, but also for other routine immunizations. In effect, this creates windows of opportunities for the spread of preventable diseases, many of which we've even forgotten about, and the attendant risk to human life. While it is true that any vaccine may have varying side effects as it is introduced to an individual's immune system, overall vaccines remain a safe and critical way to prevent severe disease and save lives. We have known this since Edward Jenner first developed the smallpox vaccine in 1796, which later eradicated the disease. From the beginning of the development of the first vaccines until today, Humanity has continued to witness the strengths and benefits of vaccines as they have prevented mass deaths from diseases like polio, measles, rubella, tetanus, and hepatitis B. In the past few decades, recently developed vaccines have provided people safety against diseases like shingles, increased access to protection against HPV, and given children protection from the painful childhood disease I'm sure many of us have experienced, chickenpox. Just last week, Dr. Kataline Kariko and Dr. Drew Wiseman were awarded the 2023 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for their work that enabled the development of effective vaccines against COVID-19 using the mRNA technology. New vaccines are currently being developed and give us hope for the prevention of future pain and suffering. As researchers work hard to find protection for the world's most vulnerable populations from diseases like malaria and HIV, we must stay vigilant in ensuring that public trust in vaccines and scientific research is not tarnished by misinformation. The hard work of doctors, scientists, researchers, to prevent the spread of these diseases will only be realized if vaccines are taken up by the public and proper protocol is developed and employed to ensure accurate education about the benefits and potential side effects. And I repeat, potential side effects of any given vaccine, given the fact that nothing is 100% proof. Global trust in data-driven science is critical for the safety and health of all populations across our globe and to prevent societies backsliding into preventable health crises. UNICEF has reported that the public perception of the importance of vaccines for children has declined through the pandemic in 52 of the 55 countries it studied. One of those countries, unfortunately, is Canada. UNICEF has indicated that factors contributing to this decline include, and I quote, uncertainty about the response to the pandemic, growing access to misleading information, declining trust in expertise, and political polarization. This increase in vaccine hesitancy coincides with an increase of preventable diseases amongst children who are unvaccinated. UNICEF has reported that the number of measles cases in the world doubled in 2022, 
and the number of children with polio increased by 16% over the previous year. The spread of COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy, along with more generalized fear-mongering and misinformation about other vaccines, is of great concern. Confidence in vaccinations has been declining in Canada to the detriment of health of our communities and children, as we see outbreaks of preventable diseases here in our own nation. Well-proven vaccines are being baselessly attacked in some circles, with fewer people accessing them, leading to preventable childhood diseases like tetanus, measles, that have a negative impact on communities and those who are unfortunately in impacted. We also know that many of the children in Canada who missed vaccines through the pandemic live in communities that are often marginalized or in hardship areas. However, we have evidence from various studies that shows us that there are ways to support Canadians who are hesitant about vaccines and to rebuild, rebuild the trust in our public health system. According to recent surveys throughout the Public Health Agency of Canada, the most trusted source of information on vaccine safety continues to be medical health professionals. Among those who were hesitant about vaccines, the most common path that led to them choosing to have their children vaccinated was discussions they'd had with their doctors, nurse practitioners, public health nurses, and other public health representatives. These findings are, are reassuring in that they emphasize the significant role that public health care workers play in dispelling myths about vaccines and educating community members about the safety, efficacy, and significance of vaccinations and immunization. In my own experience with children in Newfoundland and Labrador, I've always been impressed with how vigilant our public health nurses are and continue to be in ensuring that children's immunization records are well kept, that those who are missing immunizations are followed up and vaccinated in a timely manner. Where hesitancy comes up, appropriate consultation with healthcare providers is arranged. The incidence of preventable childhood diseases in Newfoundland and Labrador are very low, and I believe this reflects the solid foundation of community immunization that has been established by a rich tradition of public health nurses and physicians. This is an example of the strength of community-based efforts in public health education in support for vaccination. Establishing and re-establishing trust in vaccines is critical in protecting the health and well-being of all of our communities. Honourable Senators, it is important that we learn more about the effects of misinformation on vaccines and public health across the communities we represent in this country. I thank Senator Kucha for opening this platform to dialogue and bringing forward such an important initiative. And for those of you who have not yet had your shingles vaccine, my prescription pad is ready and waiting. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech.